NASA is not the same organization that once achieved the monumental feat of landing humans on the moon with technology less advanced than today's smartwatches. Today, the reality is completely different. Musk once compared this to the ancient Egyptians who built the pyramids and later lost the knowledge of their construction methods. This analogy serves as a warning that without continuous progress, even the most advanced civilizations can lose critical capabilities. After the Apollo missions, NASA's focus shifted, and for decades, progress towards returning astronauts to the moon completely stopped. The agency, having turned its attention away from the moon after the Cold War, faced a period where even accessing the International Space Station from the U.S. soil became a challenge. This persisted until SpaceX achieved the feat with its Crew Dragon spacecraft, marking the first time since the Space Shuttle program that astronauts were sent to the International Space Station from the U.S. in 2020. Recently, NASA appears to be recognizing that it's falling behind in the space race. At the same time, they seem to be pointing fingers at SpaceX and other private space companies for these difficulties. In today's video, we're going to dive into this topic, but before we get into the details, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates like this in the future. During the recent congressional hearing, former NASA Administrator Mike Griffin made headlines when he criticized the agency's famous Artemis Moon program. Griffin's criticism focused on Artemis III, NASA's mission to land astronauts back on the moon. In the past, NASA managed all aspects of its space missions by themselves, from designing and building spacecraft to planning and executing the missions. This approach allowed for rapid technological advancements and efficient mission execution. However, NASA's current strategy heavily relies on private aerospace companies. Today, companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Boeing play crucial roles in NASA's missions, providing various services and components. This collaboration has introduced new challenges, such as coordinating with multiple contractors and managing dependencies on external technologies. For example, in the Commercial Crew Program, NASA depends on SpaceX and Boeing for transporting astronauts to the International Space Station. These partnerships have brought financial benefits. For instance, a seat on SpaceX's Crew Dragon is estimated to cost around $55 million, significantly lower than the $86 million NASA was paying Russia for seats on their Soyuz spacecraft. However, the former administrators stated that NASA's partial reliance on commercial partnerships and a focus on long-term lunar settlement were misguided. Instead, he advocated for a return to the agency's core principles and a more direct approach to lunar exploration. Griffin's alternative proposed a significant shift away from commercial space endeavors. He suggested terminating contracts awarded to SpaceX and Blue Origin as part of the Artemis program, arguing that continuing with these partnerships was counterproductive. Returning to a government-led model means embracing the full control that NASA had during its golden years, like during the Apollo missions. This approach could potentially bring back the glory of NASA being at the forefront of space technology and exploration. However, moving away from private sector involvement would likely mean higher costs. Without the competitive push from companies like SpaceX or Blue Origin, things could get more expensive. In contrast, government projects, which are funded by taxpayer money, don't always face the same pressure to minimize costs. Private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are driven by profit which forces them to find more cost-effective ways of launching rockets. This has led to significant advancements in rocket technology, such as the development of reusable rockets. A comparison between NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, and SpaceX's Falcon Heavy illustrates this point. The SLS has an estimated cost of around $2 billion per launch. In contrast, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, with a similar payload capacity, costs approximately $90 million per launch. This huge price difference highlights the impact of private sector efficiency and innovation. Additionally, the development timelines of these rockets provide a clear example of the differences between government and private sector space programs. NASA's SLS has been under development for over a decade. These factors have contributed to the SLS's high cost and long development period. On the other hand, SpaceX's approach with its Falcon rockets, particularly the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, demonstrates a more streamlined development process. The Falcon 9 was developed relatively quickly and was launched in 2010. 
This success of the Falcon 9 paved the way for the Falcon Heavy, which followed with its launch in 2018. In fact, the only rocket that has attracted criticism for SpaceX is the Starship. Unlike the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, Starship faced considerable challenges and delays in its development. Starship is the tallest and most powerful rocket ever built. However, it has yet to achieve its goal of delivering a payload to orbit. The first two flight tests of the Starship in 2023 encountered significant issues. The first test in April ended in an explosion when the two stages attempted to separate, while the second test in November achieved separation but was not fully successful as both stages broke apart shortly after. The delays in Starship's development have had huge effect on NASA's Artemis mission timelines. NASA has invested billions of dollars in the Starship rocket for its Artemis program, which aims to establish a presence on the moon. Despite the setbacks, the ambition behind the Starship project is significant. Starship is not just another rocket. It's a vehicle designed for missions beyond Earth orbit, including potential human colonization of Mars. Musk has stated his vision of establishing a permanent human colony on Mars, possibly before 2050, with the Starship playing a central role in this endeavor. This rocket's height and power surpass any rocket built to date. The Super Heavy Booster, serving as the first stage, is equipped with 33 Raptor engines, designed for powerful thrust needed to propel the Starship into orbit. As of late 2023 and early 2024, SpaceX has conducted a series of tests in preparation for the upcoming Starship launch. These tests include a full-duration static fire with all six of its Raptor engines on the upper stage Starship and a separate successful firing of all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster. These tests are crucial for the upcoming third Starship launch test. The third test flight of SpaceX's Starship is more important than the first two launches for several reasons. Unlike the earlier flights, which primarily focused on testing basic flight capabilities and the rocket structure, the third flight is expected to test more complex operations such as in-orbit propellant transfer. This involves aligning the spacecraft with a tanker in space, a task that requires precise control and navigation. Once aligned, the challenging process of transferring fuel, typically cryogenic liquids like oxygen and methane, begins. Managing the boil-off of these cryogenic fuels is critical. In space, they can easily evaporate due to heat absorption. Although this refueling process is new and challenging, SpaceX's track record positions them well for this task. The ability to refuel spacecraft in orbit is essential for enabling longer and more ambitious space missions, including those to the Moon and Mars. It allows spacecraft to launch with less initial fuel, increasing payload capacity. This is a key technology for the Starship, particularly for its role in NASA's Artemis program. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.